Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me today. My name is Navi Kaufman, and I am the program director at Debris Free Oceans. We are a 501c3 nonprofit based out of Miami. And this here is our mission statement, inspiring local communities to responsibly manage the life cycle of plastics and of waste as part of a global initiative to eradicate marine debris. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys about uh, why this is so important and how you guys can get involved. So to uh, give you guys just a scale of the problem and start a little bit big picture, this is our Milky Way galaxy, our home. You might recognize it. It is home to 400 billion stars. Um, but unfortunately, we have reached a point where there's 13 times the amount of plastic in the ocean compared to stars in our Milky Way galaxy, which is crazy. Plastics are truly everywhere. They are in the uh, top of the Pyrenees Mountains. They've been observed in Antarctica. They've been observed in the deepest depths of the ocean in the Marianas Trench. And they've even been found in human stool. So how can this be? Why are we talking about plastics? Plastics like this beautiful diamond, they are forever. They're actually synthesized from oil. So when we uh, extract oil from the ground and then refine it into the building blocks of plastic products, and then we synthetically combine them with very strong carbon-carbon bonds, making these long polymer chains that are super resistant to degradation. So I like to have this image on the right here where it talks about that process of making a plastic extracting the oil, shipping it, shaping it, sending it to a store, and how we've reached a point where we find this more convenient than just uh, washing our reusable items. So uh, since they're man-made of these really strong bonds, plastics don't biodegrade like this banana on the right. Instead, they photodegrade, which is a process where sunlight and wave energy breaks that plastic down into smaller and smaller plastic particles but never the actual building block or elements of that plastic. So you can think of a paperclip chain where it breaks apart into each of the paper clips, but that paperclip itself never breaks down until its component parts. And plastics are ubiquitous. They're used for everything. They're just everywhere from our uh, cutlery and our uh, tableware to cigarette butts being made from plastics. Even our clothing is made from plastics, like polyester and nylon are actually synthetic plastic fibers. And even our car tires, which are made of synthetic rubber, um, are also made of plastic. So what is the fate of this plastic? Uh, we try to manage it through uh, landfilling and recycling, but unfortunately a study in 2015 found that about a garbage truck worth of plastic enters the ocean every single minute. So how does this trash make it to the ocean? Uh, unfortunately, 80% of this marine debris is actually land-based. So it's coming from land-based sources. And two of the major inputs are our rivers and also our storm drains. This image on the left shows the major river basins in the United States, which all empty out into the ocean. That big pink one is the Mississippi River Basin. Uh, so particles within any of that pink area can ultimately end out in the Gulf of Mexico. And also all of our stormwater drains here empty out into Biscayne Bay with very minimal filtration. So what does this mean? What are the impacts? This is a quick crash course in a few of the many impacts of plastic pollution. They accelerate climate change, it impacts human health, it harms our animal life, and it damages our local economy. So just to dive into a few examples of each of these real quick. Plastics and the climate crisis. Plastics emit greenhouse gases at every stage of their life cycle, from the extraction of oil and transport of that oil to the refining of that oil into the building block monomers of plastic. That's actually the most uh, expensive when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. And when it comes to waste management, when we incinerate and landfill plastic, it can emit greenhouse gases. And even in the environment, uh, a study found that under sunlight and in the aquatic environment, when plastic breaks down, it can emit uh, methane. And so this has led scientists to conclude that by 2050, greenhouse gas emissions from plastic alone will make up 13% of the entire global carbon budget. And then plastics and human health. We're actually exposed to plastics um, on a pretty regular basis. 
A study in 2019 found that humans ingest about a credit card's worth of plastic every week, about five grams. And a study published earlier this year that sampled seafood in a market uh, found that every single sample had uh, was contaminated with microplastics. Uh, this image on the left, on the bottom, this blue graph, is actually something I created showing microplastic exposure uh, or microplastic annual intake from drinking bottled water versus tap water. And as you can see, from drinking bottled water, you can ingest significantly greater amounts of microplastic because it leaches actually into the water. So what this means for human health, uh, this image on the right is from the Center for Environmental Law, and it was a really comprehensive uh, document about the human health impacts of plastic exposure, which you can definitely check out. It's actually linked in this slide, um, but just to name a few of the related human health impacts, it includes cancers, diabetes, developmental toxicity, and even neurological damage, just to name a few. And plastics and animal health, you might have already seen some of this. Uh, plastics impact um, over 700 species of marine life, and this is through ingestion and ultimate starvation, through entanglement, and can even be a toxicological hazard. And actually, uh, plastics absorb microorganisms that can contribute to the spread of disease. And they can even impact our local economy. This is an example, uh, a study out of NOAA, where they looked at the increase in annual recreation value for these various states based on marine debris being reduced to near zero. And that was associated with a $20 million increase in Delaware and Maryland annually, $88 million in Ohio, and $130 million in Orange County. So how do we get out of this? We're currently kind of living in a way where we're assuming fiction, where we think we have infinite resources that we can produce from, consume from, and then infinitely discard, which really isn't the case. And we need to switch to reality, which is a circular lifestyle, embracing a circular economy where we reduce, reuse, recycle, recapture, and repurpose instead of infinitely produce and infinitely discard. So what you can do from home and just do throughout your life, uh, the best one is reduce. Reduce your single-use plastic use by switching to reusable items like reusable bags, reusable bottles. And then you can also reuse the plastic items that you own because their uh, plastics are forever. You might as well continue to use them like the Ziploc bag. You can repurpose containers that came in plastic into plant jars, into containers for other items. And you can support brands that are creatively redesigning plastics. This um, image of leggings, they're actually, uh, these leggings are made from recycled post-consumer plastic bottles. And finally, last resort, I put that there because recycling is very inefficient. Only 8.2% of plastic was recycled in the US in 2017, but you definitely want to recycle over landfilling if uh, possible. Uh, so that's about it. Thank you guys so much for having me. If you have any additional questions, feel free to email me and definitely follow us through our social media channels or through our website if you want to learn more and keep up with what we're doing. Thank you guys so much. And um, hopefully I get to see someone, see you in person soon. <laughs>